Lande. He's the chairman of the Europia Institute. It's a non-profit that's raising awareness, of, awareness about the challenges of AI. Marco, welcome to the program. Um, I'm not sure if I'm uh, sensationalizing this. Does AI have the potential to destroy humanity? Does it have the potential? You know, it's not the technology that may have that potential. It's the use that we human can do about the technology. It's always the same situation. You can uh, use uh, any technology for benefits or you can use it for creating problems. It's the way we as human can determine how we should use it. That is the reason why I have created the, this uh, Institute Europia. It's already four years that we say we must have regulation. We must make sure that there are directives given by governments. I know that it is difficult. Europe is trying, but I'm glad to see now that people like uh, Elon Musk and uh, uh, Steve Bosnia, the creator of Apple, where I worked for several years, are joining us and just claiming, let's have a stop to that and let's make sure that we think about it. Marco, we saw some pictures of Sophia, the uh, robot. She's not exactly what she seems. She can't think for herself. I know. I've sat with her. I've interviewed her. But the fact is you're saying that it's the human that is going to tell the machine, and that's the danger. But isn't actually the danger the machine will start teaching itself without the human input? That's surely the danger. You know, in... 10 years, 20 years, maybe. It's, it's very difficult to say. You know, I have created the, the World AI Khan Festival where we have a, a show, Sophia, that is a humanoid created in uh, uh, Hong Kong. But there is a, no conscience. There is a, nothing that Sophia can do. You just unplug it. And Sophia is dead. Uh, I think that uh, it's very interesting to analyze how is it possible that this letter from Elon Musk came just one month after that OpenAI was valued $30 billion. Microsoft invested $10 billion. And now, one month after, they say, we have a danger. We need to make sure that we have a pause of six months. But let's uh, pose us our question. Do we think that China, India, other countries are going to stop? Are we thinking that just because uh, Elon Musk is writing this letter? the entire world of AI is uh, going really to react. I think that behind it, there is something else. You know, the, even the fact that ChatGPT was launched without any test, and we are the one that is making the test. Yeah. Usually, when you have to launch a new product, you test it inside before you release it. No. What they have done, they have inundated the entire net with ChatGPT, and we are testing this product like if we are the testing that they should have done before. Marco, listen, we're going to run out of time. Marco, I just want to ask you one more thing. If you don't mind, I really, really get that point, absolutely. But just we need to cover one more point. Okay, you're in agreement that there should be a six-month pause, and after the six months, there should be increasing regulation, but you're saying not everybody will follow that, so some countries will gain a competitive advantage. So, you're saying that there's an un, un, unrestrained arms race to develop 
artificial intelligence. So you seem to agree pretty much with this letter. Again, I want to go back to the initial point. Do you see a possibility of an AI becoming so intelligent that it decides to investigate whether it can find the launch codes for nuclear weapons in Washington or Moscow? Is that even something that occurs to you as a danger? No, no. I don't think so, and I am uh, really sure that uh, this danger may come in 10 years, 20 years, uh, but right now there is no possibility of that. Ever. Marco Landi, thank you, and for keeping it breve. Really appreciate it. Take care. Ciao. Thank you.